But, uh, but I hear my wife speak, so I wanted her to uh, say a few words to everybody first. So. Okay, first of all, I just want to thank everyone for coming out to support us on a beautiful evening when you could have been out riding your bikes or going for a leisurely stroll, but instead you're here. And there are a lot of you, so that, that says a lot about Jamie, that says a lot about you. So we are humbled, honored, flattered, pleased, blown away um, by the overwhelming support we've been getting. Um, not just tonight, but, but along the uh, campaign trail since uh, Jamie made his announcement in January. Um, and you'll take notice that um, our campaign slogan up there says qualified, experienced, compassionate. And I want to just pause on that word compassionate. Embedded in that word is the word passion. And um, Jamie, yes, is a very smart, capable, qualified person. Um, but what he has that I don't feel the other candidates have um, or that pales in comparison is that passion. He has passion for the law. He has passion for his family. He has passion for his friends. He has passion and dedication um, to anything that he puts his mind to. So um, with that in mind, I just I, I wanted to thank everyone once again. And um, you know, I think that he is the, really, truly the best man for the job, um, not because of the resume, which yes, is a prerequisite, but because of that. Compassion and passion, which you will get from him once he's on the beach. I don't need this. <laughs> <laughs> My voice has gotten stronger during the campaign. Thanks again. A lot of I recognize a lot of people here. I'm not going to go into the, uh, the long detail about my background, though. Although, if Ray Michael wants to come up here and explain some good football stories, I'm happy. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. That's okay, Ray. You can do that. So, um, a lot of you know me. Uh, I'll just go real quickly for those who haven't uh, heard heard my background. Uh, I did grow up in Erie. I graduated from Fairview High School. I did. I went to Princeton. Uh, I got out in 1980. Played football there. I uh, went to Pitt Law School, got out of there in 83. Uh, for there, after that, I took the job that probably was the most influential in shaping my career as a lawyer. I became a federal prosecutor. I was a federal prosecutor in Pittsburgh for approximately five years. And that was my first job out of law school, young, impressionable lawyer. And within weeks of graduating from law school, going to taking the bar, I'm standing in front of a federal judge in a federal court with a federal jury proving federal cases. And that was a terrific job. It taught me about the law. It got my feet wet. It got me confidence to go on and do other things. And when I was a federal prosecutor, and a lot of people don't know this because it was in Pittsburgh. It wasn't in Erie. When I was a federal prosecutor, I prosecuted the toughest cases you can think of. I, I, I prosecuted organized crime. In fact, when I left, I was in the organized crime narcotics unit. I, was, I prosecuted bank robberies. I prosecuted several gun cases, and I know we're having issues with guns in the city, and it's a very, very serious issue. I saw this 20, 25 years ago in Pittsburgh. It's a very serious issue. I've done those type of cases, and I prosecuted not one but two terrorist bombings when I was in Pittsburgh. It was unbelievable. One blew up in a, in a post office. It was a bombing that went off in a post office. Uh, luckily, no one was severely injured. Another bombing occurred. It was domestic. It wasn't international. Another domestic, another domestic uh, type of case was they wanted to blow up a soccer field or a soccer building because they didn't want it in their neighborhood. So when I started out, I started out as a prosecutor, very aggressive. I know who the bad guys are because I, I prosecuted them. Now after that, I was down in Pittsburgh for several other years with a large, large law firm, and I, pro I was uh, basically doing civil cases. Not a lot of criminal law, some criminal defense. From there, I moved back to Erie in 99. My mother got very sick. She had cancer. She had six months to live. They told me that. I knew it was time to come home. I always wanted to come back. This is my home. I love it here. Always have. But I came back in 99. Unfortunately, my mom passed in uh, May of 1999. But I was back here, and I've been back here ever since. Now, since I've been here, I've worked with a large firm, McDonald Illy. After that, I was with the... Um, I went with Bill Scarpitti and his daughter, and recently I've gone out on my own. The type of cases, some of you may have heard about them, and again, I apologize for repeating myself to those who have heard this, but I've handled a lot of the criminal uh, defense as far as homicide cases. Um, I am appointed to do these cases. I have a contract with the county. So 
those horrible cases you hear that people don't have any money, they're indigent, they're charged with the worst crimes you can think of, guess who they call? Me. So those aren't easy. But I'll tell you what, that's something that has to be done. They're very, very difficult cases. And uh, I had that, that Tania Coleman case. That was heartbreaking. That was a baby who was, who was found uh, in, the, in the garbage can. Awful, heartbreaking case. And I have a daughter that age. I have a daughter that age. So you have to sit, step back as a person and be a lawyer. And that's not always easy. That's not always easy. Nor is it always desirable. But at that point, we had to do that. But I've had a lot of those cases. I feel comfortable doing those. People ask me all the time, why did you do those cases? Why would you get involved with those type of cases? They're, they're very difficult. I said, you know what? Everybody in this country gets a fair trial. I'm not there to get acquittals. I'm there to make sure that the system works and it's a fair trial. And I would do that every time. The other thing is, at one point I knew I'd be running for judge. If I'm going to run for judge, I think there is, and I always say, I don't know how you can be a good referee unless you've played the sport. I've played the sport. I've been in trials. I've had the worst cases. I've been in the trenches. On the one hand, I've been up here as a federal prosecutor where I've had every resource in the world, and it was a wonderful job. Worked with the FBI, the Secret Service, the uh, uh, DEA. On the other hand, I've gone into places that nobody wants to go. You don't want to sit in a jail with somebody that has absolutely nothing and has told you they killed somebody. So I've been on both sides of the fences, but that's where you want to be if you want to be a judge. You need that type of experience. You have to do that. I don't think it's fair to the community or to the people in your courtroom if you don't have that type of experience. Now, as this campaign has gone on, you see where everybody kind of falls. There's, there's four of us. All of us have been rated, uh, qualified. Um, so there's going to be some, some selections to make, and I understand that. But I want everybody here to understand my experience when you have to pull that lever. You have to look at my experience compared to these other people. I've been on both sides of the fence. I've done the tough cases. I've done the cases as a tough prosecutor. I've done the civil cases. I'm an assistant city solicitor at this moment. I've handled city cases. I've done the whole gamut. Everybody else, if you listen, everybody else will tell you what they're going to do when they become judge. This is what I'm going to do. I've done it. They don't have the same experience I have. And you've got to keep that in mind. And please, you know, spread the word. I know a lot of you in here. I know a lot of you supported, and thank you very much. But I'd like, if you can spread the word and you can help, that's terrific. There's three weeks to go, 20 days. Trust me, this has been a marathon, not a sprint. It is a tough thing to do. If somebody told me how tough this was six months ago, I would have said, Blair? <laughs> what do you think? And she would have said no. But, 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 I don't, but it's, it's coming to the end, and we need some momentum. And everybody in here has been a supporter. It's been wonderful, and I really appreciate that. And just to close, I, was, uh, I picked up the paper today, and I was reading the editorial section. And uh, yes, I do read the paper. Yes. <laughs> Occasionally, I read the paper. We'll talk about it another day. <laughs> but I read this quote. I, I read this quote this morning, and um, it said, quotation for today, a good head and a good heart are always a formidable combination. Nelson Mandela. Those who know me, and know me well, know about my heart. And that will never change. I will never change when I become a judge. I have a good heart that's going to stay that way. And I hope I've had a good head. I've heard 30 years of experience have taught me what to do in a courtroom and how I'm going to be in a courtroom. And I think anybody here who supports me or votes for me will be proud, proud, if I win. So I appreciate everyone for, be, for being here. Again, I just want you to keep in mind, you know, spread the word, do what you can. I appreciate it, and have a good time. Thanks.